And the PS3 is one of my favorite consoles, so today I want to share with you my PS3 collection. I'll start with Soul Calibur 4. Uh, Soul Calibur 1 is one of my favorite games of all time. It was on the Dreamcast, of course. And I didn't like 2 as much. I really didn't like 3. And 4, I probably like second best after 1. Um, I love the create a character aspect of it. I created a lot of cool characters. I still have my stuff I printed out or wrote on, I don't remember. Uh, the orange box uh, contains Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Episode 2, Portal, and Team Fortress 2. Um, I've only ever played the Half-Life 2. I don't like first-person shooters usually, but Half-Life is one of the ones I do like, and Half-Life 2 as well. Eco and Shadow of the Colossus collection. Um, Shadow of the Colossus is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, the original one on the PlayStation 2. And um, actually I have Ico, Ico on the PlayStation 2 as well, but I've never played it. Um, but love Shadow of the Colossus. Um, I still haven't played the Blue Point remake on the PlayStation 5. I don't have a PlayStation 5. Okay, next we have Child of Eden. Uh, on rails rhythm shooter by the people who did uh, Res and Luminous, and didn't they do Tetris Effect more recently? I like this game. I only ever played it with the controller. I didn't have the PlayStation Move controllers. Played it with the regular controller, and I loved it. Oh, with headphones. You gotta wear headphones playing that game. The music is incredible. It's just like Res in that it. Um, your actions add sound and noise to the music and then how well you're doing also adds to the music. Uh, if you're doing really well and nice it gets really lush and full, a kind of electronic house techno stuff. Virtua Tennis 3 and 4. Um, I love the Virtua Tennis games. Uh, I played a couple of them on the Dreamcast, and Virtua Tennis 3 was just as fun, with better graphics. I love to create a character on these. I like to create myself and then play through as a tennis star. Um, Virtua, Fido, or Virtua Tennis 4, I've still never opened. I purchased this probably two years ago. I never knew there was a part four. Um, I just haven't gotten around to playing it yet. Okay, also from Sega, we have Yakuza 3. This one is still sealed, although I have um, the um, digital version on my PlayStation 4 that I've been playing. That's the first Yakuza game I've played. Actually, that's a lie. I've played Yakuza Dead Souls, which we'll get to later. Another sealed game, Never Dead. I remember I have a lot of sealed games because, you know, way back when, I got my PlayStation 3 in, I think, 2009, early 2009, um, on eBay. I got a really great deal used, and it worked for a decade. Um, anyway, back then, PlayStation 3 wasn't doing so well. It was expensive. Um, everyone had the Xbox 360, and everyone was into the Wii. Um, so a lot of times you could go to like Target or Walmart and find PS3 games on clearance for just a couple bucks. So a lot of these games I would, I would pick up for like $5 or $7 and think, oh, I'll, I'll try that out. Oh, I'll, I'll try that out. And then of course, you know, over a decade later and it's still sealed. I'll try that out. Uh, I think this one just is by Konami, Never Dead. I think it got just kind of middling reviews. No one really loved it or hated it. It was just kind of there. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to put these two together. We have Vanquish and Bayonetta. I've played both. Bayonetta 
They're both awesome games. I've played more of Bayonetta. I may have even beat Bayonetta, the first one. Um, but I don't really remember it, honestly. I remember it was a lot of action, a lot of jumping and hack and slashing. And Vanquish, I just remember a lot of bullets flying. I'd like to give both of these a shot. I have the collection on PlayStation 4. I'd like to give uh, another shot to both of them. I'd like to finish both of them, actually. Way of the Samurai. If you ever played this, uh, the older games on PlayStation 2, you know how much fun they are. Um, this is kind of like a... I don't know, it's weird now. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure samurai game, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but... I don't know. You, you get to choose how you want to react. Do you want to be mean? Do you want to help? Do you want to be uh, a jerk? You just get to pick and that determines how the story plays out. And it's really cool. I, I feel like it was doing that on consoles a long time ago before other games started doing it. Like, um, you know, you think of like uh, Fallout or, um, you know, those kind of games where you get to choose how you want to, how you want to be in the game. I feel like this was doing that first. I could be wrong, but I love these games. Okay, one of my favorites. We have the Journey Collector's Edition, which could also just be called the That Game Company Collection. Uh, it has Flow, Flower, and Journey all on the disc. And two of those games are uh, some of my favorites. One is not, but um, we'll talk more about those later. Another sealed one, 3D Dot Game Heroes. Uh, I think a lot of people know about this now, although it seemed like it went under the radar for a long time, but that of course is like a um, 3D pixel voxel take on the old uh, Legend of Zelda formula, the old Nintendo game. Um, it looks incredible. I just, it's one of those games I just never got around to. Ooh, one of my favorites, Resident Evil 5. Uh, now, I know this game has some problematic elements in it, uh, but, you know, I hope if Capcom remakes this, like they've been remaking the rest of them, you know, they kind of get rid of those problematic elements because without those, you have a really great game. It's just a really fun game, um, especially if you're doing uh, co-op. It's one of the best co-op experiences ever, um, but only if you have a friend playing. If it's with the computer, you might as well just turn it off and wait for a friend to come over. Resonance of Fate. An RPG by Tri-Ace. Sega's name is on there too. I don't know anything about this. It's still sealed. I never played it. Fallout 3. Now, I love this game. This is one of my favorite games of all time too. But I feel like it gets a bad rap now. I feel like people really like Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 more than Fallout 3. Um, but at the time, man, it was so cool. I'd never played a Fallout game, and of course, I think this is this the first 3D one? I don't know, but it was so incredible choosing how you wanted to, to play the game in a post-apocalyptic setting. I set, I set my guy to look just like Mad Max, and he had his dog like Mad Max. Um, so cool. Such a fun game. Okay, Metal Gear Rising. Revengeance. You know, I've only ever played a little bit of this game, but, uh, you know, it's by Platinum, so you know it's just incredible action. Actually, this is the only Metal Gear game I've ever played. I've never played any of the other Metal Gears. Uh, someday I hope to finish it. I really would like if they bring it back, maybe PS4, PS5. Okay, Eternal Sonata. This is one of, uh, one of my more recent games. I purchased. It's still sealed, but it will be unsealed soon when I start playing it. It's an RPG about uh, a composer. Uh, that's all I really know about it. Aquanauts Holiday. This is the Japanese version. I um, really wish I would have gotten the English version, but it's a lot more expensive. Um, but I wish that because I started playing it. I love these kinds of games. Very calm, very ch relaxed and chill. Um, I got stuck maybe 10 minutes into it. I, and I have no idea what to do. So 
I'm just stuck. Okay, one of my favorites, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. This is one of the best kart racing games I've ever played. And yes, I'm including Mario Kart in there. I do love um, Mario Kart 64 and the original Mario Kart. But this one is just so good. And especially if you're a Sega fan. Because they have so many tracks from so many kind of dormant Sega IPs. They have uh, Skies of Arcadia levels. They have Skies of Arcadia characters, I believe. Shinmu characters. Um, Space Channel 5 characters. Uh... Uh, Jack Ryan Radio um, stages and characters. It's awesome. It plays really well. It handles really well. Okay, another Sega game, Valkyria Chronicles. Uh, this game is beautiful. It has a cell shaded watercolor style uh, that is just incredible. I'd have never seen anything like it on a, any other game. Um, this is the first strategy type game I ever played, and I love it. It's like a turn-based strategy game, but at the same time you get to control the characters in a 3D space and so there's action in it mixed in with the turn with the turn-based strategy stuff. Um, it does have permadeath. You can lose characters permanently if you're not careful. If you are careful, you won't lose them. So be careful. Fist of the North Star. This is by Koei Tecmo. It's like a Muso type game where you're running around as Ken, uh, Kenshiro, just beating everybody up. This game is so much fun. Man, I really need to get back into playing this one. We have Azura's Wrath. I've played a lot of this. This is like a uh, anime OVA that you're playing through. It's really cool. Um, the only thing that soured me on this is I hear you have to buy the DLC to get the the ending. Or maybe it's just like a good ending. In, in any case, it kind of soured me on finishing the game because it's like, well, don't you want... You can't chop off the ending and sell it separately. That's weird. But it's action-packed. It looks great. The graphical style looks great. It is a lot of quick-time events. So if you're not a fan, you may not want to do Azura's Wrath. This one I think is kind of rare. This is Folklore. I don't know much about this. Uh, yeah, I know there's two different stories you can play as. There's a woman and a man. They're in some kind of fairy tale setting. Folklore setting. Conan. Yeah, Conan. A total God of War ripoff. Um, and this is like... God of War 1 and 2 ripoff style of game. But I liked it. I like Conan, so I liked... It's fine, just give me that and uh, give me Conan and with God of War play, play mechanics and that's fine. Although it is, you know, it doesn't do anything new and it is kind of, um, well, it's no God of okay, War. Okay, we have Tekken Tag Tournament 2. I entered a music uh, remix contest with this and um, missed the deadline by an hour, so I didn't get it included. Anyway, uh, the cool thing about this that I think is cool is that on every stage you can replace the music. So on the PlayStation 3 has a hard drive. You can put your own MP3s on your hard drive. Then when you go into the game you can assign different tracks to different stages. So every time you play that stage your own music comes on, not the game soundtrack. So if you the possibilities are endless. Someone like me who loves music and I make my own music, if I want to hear my own songs in the game, I can do that. That is just so cool. You know, that is so cool. And I wish they, game companies flirted with that kind of, like I remember the original Xbox, you could rip tracks from CDs and do stuff with that in some, some of the games. They flirted with the, that idea for a while, but you know, PlayStation 4, at least I know, got rid of all that stuff and, I guess you can do Spotify uh, if, if you do that. I don't really care about that, but I think this one is also rare. It's Africa. Basically a uh, real life Pokemon. You're on the African plains photographing uh, animals out there. I've only ever played just a tiny little bit of it. It seemed a little stiff, a little slow, but I mean, it's a photography game. So it, it makes sense it would be kind of slow, slow paced. Um, it looks cool. It looks beautiful. Okie dokie, Nino Kuni. Won't focus. Uh, 
Nino Kuni, this is a Studio Ghibli level five game. So it has that beautiful cell shaded look of a Studio Ghibli film. Looks incredible. I remember um, playing it, it has so much charm, but I remember the gameplay of it, the combat, I, I remember not liking it. It's, it's been a while since I played it, but I remember thinking it was a little convoluted and just not very fun. And to me, that's a huge part of a game. Like, is it fun? Am I having fun? I wasn't really having fun with this. I would like to, I would like to give it another shot just because of how beautiful and how charming it is. Virtua Fighter V. Classic arcade fighting game. Not much to say about it, really. I'm not good at fighting games, but I like them. Uh, I like to just have fun. This one's beautiful still. Uh, they just re-released it maybe last year on uh, PlayStation 4 consoles. Uh, it's awesome. This one might be rare. It's Puppeteer. This game, speaking of charming games, this game is so charming. It all takes place on a stage. It's like it's a play acting out uh, with, with puppets and, you know, cut paper and... Uh, yeah, it's just awesome, and it plays out. The story plays out kind of like a fairy tale. There's a narrator, uh, evil witch, uh, evil lion type stuff. This is awesome. Definitely give this one a shot. Here's a couple I don't really know much about. So, Trinity Souls of Zillow Ill. Um, I just remember I played the demo of this on the PlayStation 3, and then I remember you know a long time ago finding it really cheap, like I said at maybe Target or Walmart. And just picking it up. I popped it in, I played it for a little bit, and um, I don't know, I just never went back to it. I would like to someday though. Uh, White Knight Chronicles, almost the same exact story here. It's an RPG by, is it level five? Yeah, level five. Uh, same exact thing. I, I played a little bit of it. This one didn't um, grab me as much as Trinity's LOL did. Um, yeah, I don't think it gets really high reviews either. I think people are just kind of uh, not really into it. Uh, then Nier, again, hadn't really played that much of it. I did get the remake version on PlayStation 4. I've played more of that than I have of the original on PlayStation 3. We have Catherine. Um, and I think this game is sort of come to light, has some problematic elements as well. And that's a shame because I love the puzzle part of the game. I'm not, a, I'm not into visual novels really. So the, the visual novel part, the part of just hanging around, talking and the relationship stuff, not really into it. The puzzle mechanics, the trying, there's a puzzle part of it where you're trying to make your way to the top of the tower you have to move the blocks around and stuff. That part is so much fun. Love that. Street Fighter versus Tekken or X Tekken or Cross Tekken. Never played it, still wrapped. 1398 at Target. Prince of Persia, sometimes called Prince of Persia 2008, I believe. This is the cell shaded one. And this one's wrapped, oh, but I've, I've actually beaten this game. Um, uh, I guess I sold it when I moved. I sold a lot of my games when I moved recently, and um, so I, I thought about it, and I wanted this one back in my collection, so I rebought this one. Um, I, like I said, I have beaten it. It's not the best game, but like, like I said, I'm a sucker for cell shading, so it looks beautiful. Um, playing it again recently, I have the digital version as well. Playing it again recently, the characters felt very floaty and very just kind of sliding around all over the place. Uh, we have Siren, new translation. This is the scariest game I've ever played. Ever. Um, I don't think we got a physical edition here in North America. Um, this is the Asian version. It does have English. Man, this game is scary. I've never completed it because it's so scary. I'm not big into scary games, but I do like survival horror. And this is very much survival horror. Um, I think you do get a gun in the game, but it's not like Resident Evil. You're not just blown away all the zombies or whatever. Um, you're mostly hiding and running and man, it is creepy and scary and dark, like actually dark, it's very dark, hard to see sometimes. 
I highly recommend this game though. I love it, especially if you like survival horror or just scary games in general. So also speaking of creepy, we have Alice Madness Returns. I love this game. It's one of my favorites on the system. It's got just such a twisted, dark fantasy vibe that I really like. Um, there's parts of it that get a little too edgy for its own good, but there are parts that aren't like that and they're just kind of perfect. So I love this. This is the sequel to American McGee's Alice, which um, a version came with that. I played a little bit of it. It wasn't for me. Here's Yakuza Dead Souls. Not much to say about this one. Um, found it for cheap. Tried it. It's all right. Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare. Um, this was the DLC that got its own standalone physical release, which is really cool. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Um, a zombie game set in the in the wild wild west, which you don't really get. I don't think I ever beat this game. I think I came really close. Um, it was a lot of fun. Okay, we have Katamari Forever. I love the Katamari games. That's a Katamari coaster I made. Here. Remember them? The family? Anyway. Katamari Forever. Anyway. Katamari Forever is awesome. Just like all the Katamari games. They're all great. I think I've played them all, except there was one on the Xbox 360. So my beautiful Katamari, I think, maybe? That I never played. Um, but I've played the PSP one, I've played the Vita one, uh, both PlayStation 2 games, and Katamari Forever. I love these. And finally, we have Tokyo Jungle. Uh, this is the play, uh, PlayStation. This is the Japanese version, um, because North America did get a physical a, a version, but it was called the PSN Collection or something. It was a bunch of games, it was a few games on there and Tokyo Jungle is just one of them. And then this is the Japanese release. Ooh, it comes with a manual and reversible cover. Very cool. Um, this is such a fun, unique game. If you've never played it, this is a, one, of the, one of the games I would recommend um, that are exclusive, that if, to get a PS3 for, this would be one of them. For sure. Uh, you play as an animal just trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic uh, Tokyo and you're trying to eat, hunt, uh, mate, and survive. And there's, you gotta fight other animals, you gotta fight pollution, you gotta fight hunger. It's Okay, well thanks everyone for hanging out with me going through my PlayStation 3 collection. I have a lot of great memories with the PlayStation 3. Do you know that I got a PlayStation 3? I first got a PlayStation 2 after the PlayStation 3 came out. I had never had a PlayStation 2 until 2007 or 8 or something. Uh, then I got a PlayStation 3. And man, I loved it from the get go. I loved the PlayStation 3. They had already had the store, they had already revamped the store, I think, once since it came out, you know, PlayStation 3 came out in 2006, I think. Um, and by the time I got it in 2009, they'd already revamped the store. They had had quite a few system updates. Still had Linux, I believe. Still had folding at home. But I have a lot of great memories associated with the PlayStation 3, and I feel like I'll probably make another video about those memories and maybe go into more depth about some of these games. I'd also like to do a video about PlayStation Network games. This is Noby Noby Boy. Because um, a lot of those games, you know, the limited run companies weren't operating um, for a lot of those years. And so they weren't, at least not to my knowledge, maybe I'm wrong. But so a lot of those games are stuck on the PlayStation Network. They're, they don't have physical releases. I'm thinking of like The Last Guy and Contra Hardcore Uprising, uh, Pain. Maybe, did Pain have a physical release? I don't know. Uh, so anyway, thanks again, and I'll be seeing you soon. Bye-bye.